Hello everybody, all of my new friends and all of my friends that came back or anybody on this page today, whether you're my friend or you're just passing through. I am excited to bring to you 1 Chronicles chapter 18. Every day, if somebody leaves, I go hunt. That's I'm going to find me somebody else. You know how sometimes people will drop you, right? I'm on the hunt for anybody that might want to listen. I don't want to overlook anybody. So I'm excited. If this is your first time seeing me, they call me Brenda. Ever since they said it's a girl. And that's what I call myself, even to this day. And I'm getting ready to go into 1 Chronicles chapter 18. Father, we thank you today. I clap. I, I dance. I am excited about what you have to say to us today. It's a new day. But this word been sitting like good wine, just waiting for somebody to open it up, and it is so good. And I thank you that you showed me how to read your word, and you are showing me. This is, this is just not a book, this is the truth. And I'm glad that I'm learning how to read it, because it's the way you handle this book. And I am so excited to share with the world the things that you have shown me, and I'm just waiting for somebody to wake up and say, you know what? Brenda is telling the truth. Anyway, it's not about me telling the truth. I just happen to read the truth. I just happen to be the one that's speaking it because it's already written. Not about me. Thank you, Father, for every listener, every friend that I have on Facebook. Everybody want to be my friend. If I got room enough, they will be my friend. And I hope that they hear your word today and we become educated. The word is educated. The word is to be filled with the knowledge, which is the Holy Spirit, that we might be filled with the knowledge. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. So that's my, ex, you know, you know, people like, you know, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And I, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Well, that means you ask me, am I filled with the word of God? And I'm as full as, I, I got as much word in me. In other words, I have as much Holy Spirit as I have the word of God. If there is no word of God, then there is no filling of the Holy Spirit. So you want to be filled with the word of God, then you are full of what God said, which what he said is his right way of behaving, his right spirit. It's just his right conduct. So we know whether or not we are filled with the spirit by the way we behave, not because we say we not because we say we feel with the Spirit. Can I? Can you see my behavior, which indicates my spirit? And if I'm filled with the knowledge of God and I activate it, then that's an indication that I am filled with the Spirit. And I will speak with a new tongue. In other words, I'm going to be cussing you out. I'm going to speak with a tongue that perhaps you... You know, we like to say, well, I'm an unknown tongue. Sometimes, sometimes being nice to people that cuss all the time can be an unknown tongue. They don't, they all be cussing. Or saying something that's not right. But anyway, let's get into the word of God and see what God is saying. According to 1 Chronicles 18, do I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I don't have the word of God working inside of me? Just make a noise. All right, yesterday in the 17th verse, I would like to elaborate on the conversation that David had with Nathan. With Nathan, <clears throat> the prophet Nathan, they were talking, regular conversation. David told Nathan, said, Nathan, I live in a house that's made of cedars. He said, I want to build God a house I want to build the word of God or the, the Ark of the Covenant special place since I'm living in a house made of cedar. And Nathan said, you know what, David? I think you're you a righteous man. Go ahead and do it. Whatever's in your heart, you, you, you've you already proven that you're a good man. And Nathan walked out and God said, go back and tell David. I heard the conversation. Go back and tell him. I don't want you to be in the house. It's not going to come through you. What did I learn out of it for my behavior? Watch what you say, because God is always listening. David and Nathan were talk, they were talking to each other. 
But David told Nathan, and Nathan agreed with David, but God said, I was listening, but I saw them get ready to get off on the wrong track. So I retracted. Nathan said, go back and tell David, no, you are not going to build me a house. So that's something that we can learn is that, number one, God will, God is listening. And a good thing God listened to those who want to do the right thing, but may not be doing the right thing, so God will send correction. So he was listening to David, and he also corrected David. That's good, because God said, you're getting ready to make a mistake. You're getting ready to do something wrong. Even though you meant good, it's not necessary for you to do that. He said, you are not going to be the one to build my house, but your son will, not you, David. Why David, God didn't want David to build a house? The word says because he was a man of war. But when we think of that, we might think of David being a bad guy. No, David was a guy that took care of business. Imagine trying to build God, take the time to give God something, something and then you in the middle of wars. By the time you get it, he, by the time you get it ready to be built, then you got to stop, go fight somebody. Then God said, "No, nah, I wait. You got you a man of that to bring down the wrong kind of blood, and I just need you not to focus on that. You focus on what you're called to do, and I'll raise up your son. Since it's in you to do it, then I'll let one of your boys do it for me. So." The only thing I can say, these practical teachings that God has in his word for us is found in the behavior of God's people, namely David. I was listening to your conversation, you and Nathan. I brought correction and I told you, you won't do it, but your son will. But thank you, David. But, but in fact, David, not only am I going to, not only am I going to, um, let your son be a meal house. I'm going to build a house through you for you. I'm going to use your name and, and who you are. And I'm going to build me a, a, a house. I'm going to be a... See, God is like, I meant every word of the word build. I mean, when I make promises, I mean, look it up. The deepest definition cannot define the truth of God and how much, how good it's going to be. I'm going to be a, be a house through you, David. And I'm talking about for real, for real. And he did just that. And Jesus is saying, I am a carpenter and I want to build you. And I want to, I want to build you up so much so until I want to live in there. I'm going to be your landlord. I'm going to be your uh, maintenance guy. I'm going to be your... Uh, yard keeper, I'm going to be your anything that concerns you. When I build you, I'm going to take care of all of you. And I'm not going to charge you a dime. This house is on me. Oh, uh, this house is on me. So God is saying that what he promised David, we live it. We have the opportunity to read about it and become whatever God said. David never did not have a copy of what Jesus did other than the promise. We have the promise. And Jesus says, since you have the promise, then let me build you up. And I will establish myself. And your neighborhood is going to look better than anybody else. And it's going to be you individually. Everything about you is going to represent me. And it's going to look good if you listen to me. That's how God builds us. All right, let's get into the chapter of 18. So that's just something else. When you read the word, then you can find something in the word to apply to your life. And you can become a better you. Want to be a better you? Then read the word and get a good understanding. And then, you know, <clears throat> several people read the word in a way they could, they go in and they might just take that part of the scripture out. But the bottom line is to be filled with the knowledge of God, no more than just a piece of the word. Find, you know, look at chapter 17 and read the entire thing. It's real easy. Then God will use you to be able to encourage somebody just by what you ate yourself. You don't have to give them all of it, but you can give them a, a portion of it that's good, but at least you know the whole story. So that's what God is saying. Hey, Jennifer Taylor, Jennifer Clerk Taylor. All right, Miss Jennifer, we're going to ask God to build us up, make us a, a residence of where people can stop by us and say, the Lord lives in that house, talking about us. 
right, let's have some fun in chapter 18. But that's what, it, what I'm all about. This book is so alive. This book is so alive that I can't hold wait to God give me a stage so I can show people how good this book is while I'm at home ain't going that many places. Now, after this came to pass, what came to pass? That God told David, I'm going to build a house, me and Jennifer. He's going he gonna to use us, and we're going to be what he told David. He's going to keep his promise to David by using Jennifer and myself. Hey, Jennifer again. All right. Now, how is God going to build Brenda and Jennifer up? Now, after this, it came to pass that David, okay, David talking to God, mind his own business, trying to get, you know, do something nice, and then somebody want to fight him. Why people be minding their own business, somebody out there ready to fight you? Every day you got to get up. If it's not a fight outside, it's a fight inside. Now, why the enemy talking to you all the time? Always picking on you. Always trying to tell you somebody talking about you. They don't like you. And you're looking at yourself, you know, you're too big. He always got something to say. So God has said, this is what I want to do to the enemy that comes toward David. So you can take note what I'm going to do to, it, to the enemies that come toward you. Now, after this, after David did all this talking to God about, well, according to chapter 18, after we read chapter 17, then we go to chapter 18 thinking that. Now, after this good news that God had just given David, now, after this, it came to pass that David smote the Philistines. David said, why can't I always be beating y'all down? And subdued them and took Gath, that's the place where the Philistine lived, and her towns out of the hand of the Philistine. He said, give me back what belonged to God. I know I got to, see, here you go. I wake up in the morning and here you are trying to start something. You know I'm going to beat you down now, says the Lord through David. Give me back my stuff and let me move on. Please leave. You just got beat be down. And he smote Moab. David said, why y'all keep coming at me? Moab. And the Moabites became David's servants and brought gifts. Let me tell you how to see them. I'm telling y'all who the Moab, Moabites are, or Moab folk is. I was a Moab person. What are you in? You're from the United States. Child, I had the spirit of a Moabite. You know what that is? The spirit of a Moabite was a person who was trying to do God trying to live right without God's word. Doing all that stuff. What did these girls do? They got their daddy to get them pregnant. Got their daddy drunk. Laid with their daddy. And their daddy didn't even know what he was doing because he was too drunk to realize I'm sleeping with my daughter. Because they thought after God had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, that was all, all the people left. And they were the only three left. And they said, we got to populate this earth again. You sleep with dad tonight and I sleep with tomorrow night. And them, those girls did that. And one of those guys' name was Moab. How'd they get here? The wrong way. What were they trying to do? Please God in the wrong way. And God said, Brittany, you were doing the same thing. The absence of the knowledge of God is a Moabite. And when you're trying to do God's assignment without his word, so anytime, he will, just like these girls sleeping with our daddy, getting them drunk, trying to give God something to use. God said, no, they meant well, so I'm going to be slow to bring correction to them. So we, when they got to Canaan, he told the Canaanites, don't bother the Moabites. I'm working with them. But now God is saying, I've been working with y'all for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. You got to pay attention to what I said. Stop trying to do something for me and give it to me. It is not what I wrote. So he worked with the Moabites, but by the time David got there, and this is what happened. The Moabites was lined up in three rows. God said, I ain't going to get rid of all of y'all, but I'm going to take y'all down because y'all won't stop. I've been good to you all. I protected you. I acted like. You were serious. I mean, I was serious with you because you seemed to be serious, but you won't stop sinning when I told you and, and it illustrated and sent you people to see a better way of living, but you, you like my own, my own old comfortable, comfortable way. So what David did said, put him in three rows. Kill two, save one. Kill two, save one. Kill two, save one. Two thirds of those people died. And David said, but you know who you know who else was in the Moabite family? 
David's grandmama. Who is David's grandmama? Ruth. Who was Ruth married to? Boaz. Well, how did that get to be David's kinfolk? Because Obed was their son. And Obed had Jesse and Jesse had David. So he said, but when it comes down to the word of God, even if my grandmama won't change, but mama, you got to change now because I don't play favoritism. So some of y'all, my cousin, David said, I know y'all my cousin, but when it comes down to the word of God, we got to have some law around here, some order. So I can't teach the word and then my mama sitting up there and she's doing something well, I can't say that because I don't want to bother my mama. I, who was that? Uh, Solomon. When his mama came in there, Bathsheba. And uh, she was asking Solomon to do something for his, uh, his brother that wanted to be king but couldn't be to I want to marry the woman that uh, 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 Abishag. Abishag was the woman that was supposed to keep David warm. So he asked Solomon, could I have her? To my bad, she's going to ask Solomon, can I help? Can I have her go and her be my wife? And Solomon looked at his mama and said, What you want? Give him the kingdom? If let it if the day I breathe, the day he dies. I'm not getting ready to give you what he asked Call you my mama. He sent you in here. Mama, and guess what? Bathsheba said another word. Because she saw her son was not playing at the time he was doing the right thing. So when we are going to get in the word of God. And we see what God is saying through David. Small, the Moabites, he's saying, I'm tired of people going in my name and ain't reading my word. He said, I don't play that. I don't play that. He said, I'll, I'll let you slide. I'll work with you. I'll send you a dream. I hope you pick up the word at some point. I'll send you somebody to tell you. But at some point, you got to go back and read my word. You got to go back and do it. What nobody ever did. You said, well, my mama talked. Oh, we no, don't blame this on your mama now. Everybody got a mama. If that's the case, then why the world look like it did if your mama was right? Your mama right, her mama right. How about you let me be God and I'll be here, but I'll be right. I'll see if my word back of what your mama said. But if your mother did not tell you to stay in this word, then your mama was wrong. This ain't got nothing to do. Ain't no kin. God ain't got, ain't nobody. God said, oh, I love all souls. He said, but the soul that won't get in my word, it's going to die. I know, I know we don't want to talk about our grandmama. It make it real special when grandmama did that. I'm sorry. It, it, you know how many grandmamas on earth? I'm a grandmama. That doesn't mean that if my grandchildren hold me in high esteem that I'm right. If I'm not giving you the word of God, I'm a lie. So let's keep it simple. Stay in the word and keep it simple. So David went there and got the Moabites. So you go back and say, Brenda, how you know that? I read the word and I learned it and it's take time to do it. So that's how I learned it. All right. And David smoked Hadiazah. Hadiazah. I'm only reading in uh, uh, First Chronicles the same thing that uh, First uh, Samuel, King, the book of Samuel, the book of King confirms what happened with David. So you go back in there and you look and it's saying, this, this is just a repeat lesson. See what happened was. God got rid of all those kings and the children of Israel had to go in exile for 70 years. So when they came out of exile, we got Ezra. And Ezra got on the phone and said, you know what? I got I to gotta, I gotta go study the word so I can tell them. What you say? Yeah, I'm online. I got to tell these folks let me call you back because I can't talk to you in online too. Tell everybody, I said, hey. Oh, he said, ain't nobody on the phone, bro. This is my prop. <laughs> anyway, they helped me tell my story. What happened was the children of Israel went into exile. That means they were incarcerated for 70 years. That's like me being born and I miss out on all of my youth, all of my teenage years, all of my 20s and my 30s and my 40s and my 50s and my 60s and 70s, and God said, now you can come out. That means my whole life is pretty much at its, the ending point. So the children here lost a lot of years because they wouldn't obey under all those leaders as kings. And then God said, let me lock y'all up because y'all think I'm playing. And a lot of them died. And he said, I'm going to bring a few. A few of y'all going to make it out of them. And it was a few. Let's say Hundreds of thousands went at, in there. A thousand came back. I'm just giving you a you know a ratio of what it was like to go in and then come out. So God has said, I ain't playing now. 
I'm not playing. Y'all go, go get away from me for 70 years. You don't talk to me? You just go ahead. But in that 70 years, we got this guy named Ezra. So the book of Ezra is the same guy that is writing the book of Chronicles. And what he's doing, he's organizing what was. So he went back and saw the laws of Moses and he saw what the kings did and he saw everything. And so he started lining up. We got to start over. So I got to get everything in order. And I'm, I'm giving you chronicles or chronological order of what I have left, of all the things I have left to tell the people what happened after we got back to the land that God promised us. But we got, now we know we've got to act right, because otherwise we see that God don't play. So uh, this is what uh, Ezra is writing. And David smote Hadezah. Hadezah. Hadezah was a guy that was like a bully. Yeah, children of Israel not doing anything. But David said, y'all better back off. I don't play that. You want to die? Just keep messing with me. And keep messing with the people that God has given me to be over. And it's almost like you got a good president of the United States that said, wait a minute, hold up. Back off. Back off. I'm not playing now. So we got to stop. That we need some peace for a minute. Back off. So God raised up David. David could fight. And David said, not only can I fight, my partners can fight. So it ain't going to be about me doing all the killing. I got folk that know how to kill. All I'm asking you to do is back off. Back off now. What has God said to us in our personal lives according to chapter 18? Anytime anybody come up against you that don't line up with what you know God told you to do and it's calling you a problem, God said, tell them I said back off. Even if in your thoughts... And you wake up and you find something negative to say about yourself. Tell that spirit of negativity to back off. You got things to do. And so, and David Small had the Azar. Had the Azar. I don't feel like I don't feel like fooling with you today now. But he said, No, nah, I want to fight. Why you want to fight me? I'm over here living right, teaching right. I'm a good doctor. I'm a good lawyer. I don't cheat on my taxes. I don't do all these things. And you still want to fight me? What's up with you? They were jealous of the fact that the children of Israel were productive, even in a small remnant. As long as they live, right, God said, I will fight for you. As long as you stay within the house that I told you to live in, I got you. And that's what they were doing. And they came picking on David and said, wait a minute, hold up now. I've been fighting ever since I was a little boy. I kill lions, I kill bears, I kill Goliath. Please let me not kill you. And David smart how the Azar king of Zobah. King of Zobah unto Hamnot as he went to establish his dominion by the river of Euphrates. I got things to do. And you got to go because you're in my way. So God gave him the strength to kill that guy. And David took from him a thousand chariots. You came up with all your chariots. I already told y'all. Y'all don't believe in killing animals. I'm going to kill you and your animals if you come over here on this property that does not belong to you. It does not belong to you. And we got people that read the word and they say, we don't really want to offend the people that, that you know, they believe in the animals, you know, the life of the animal because they're innocent. Bring your animal over here on my property and interfere with what God got going on. You and your animal got to die. You want your animal to stay on, on your side of the road? We got to stop taking God's word and feeling sorry for Say what he said, let him do what he did and let the People roll on. He said he took thousands of chari chariots, 7,000 horsemen, people that ride the horse, and 20,000 people on the foot. David also healed all the chariots. He said, boy, I'm going to take these, I'm going to break your whole leg. I'm going to make him cripple now. I'm telling y'all, don't play now. Don't come over here interfering on anything that God has already reserved for his people. Leave us alone. Who are we again? Let me tell you. We the doctors that are on time. We are the uh, nurses that are on time. We are the teachers that do our job. We are the uh, uh, parents that's raising our kids right. Why are you bothering us? We are the police that, that, that do the right thing. We are the government that represents God. We are people that pray. We are the people that keep our houses clean. We are the people that keep our streets clean. And you want to fight us. I'm going to tell you, David said, God has anointed me. He told me, he said, I got to get 2021 here. 
and y'all trying to stop some, you trying to stop the progress, and you got all your horses as if that is to scare me. God told me he, he don't need a lot of horses to do what he got to do. So David took the horse and healed the chariot horses, but reserved of them a hundred chariots. He said, I keep a hundred of them. I don't need that many because God told me don't, because next thing you know, people going to think you need weapons for me to get the job done. God said, no, nah, I don't need all that. I don't want you to be in charge thinking you got to have a lot of stuff for me to get the word done. He said, I can speak the word and I get it done. And when the Syrians, the enemies of the masters came to help, how did he say, oh, how did he say, I got some help. The Syrians said, they, they, they were beating y'all down. Okay. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadiezer, king of Zobah, David said, I'm going to slew you. I'm going to I'm I'm kill you too. He said, slew. Of the Syrians, two and 20,000 men. David said, when y'all going to back off? You, how come you know I keep winning, but you still want to fight? At some point, when you going to realize that God, you can't beat God? Why don't you just join our team? You, you want to be a part of my team. I let you be a part of my, I show you how to be prosperous. I show you how to get children that you ain't got to go to the judge for the judge to tell you to help you raise them. You just get the word of God, do what the word said. You don't need no judge, judge be calling you. So how you get all your children to act right? Ain't none of them ever seen me. The word. David said, I don't get y'all. Then David put up garrisons in Syria, Mascus, and the Syrians became David's servant. You know what them folk did? Those guys came in to kill David. He didn't kill all of them. He said, some of y'all going to be, y'all, I'm going to give y'all something to do, like cut the wood and build some houses. He ain't going to let you sit up in a jailhouse and just waste all that strength. You don't know how to act. You had a bad person leading you. I know you wouldn't do this if it wasn't a law, so let me let you just work for me. The ones y'all got left. Like I think about all these incarcerated strong men in jail. At least everybody in jail, you know, I'm just saying. They, they, if they got some instructions, and they meet a man like David. They're going to say, David, I like you. And David said, you want to be saved? Tell me about your God, David. And David took those serious. And then he said, they were treated with dignity, even though they were under his uh, uh, authority for having done the wrong thing. And guess what they did? They gave David gifts. If we live right, even our enemy will have to say, it's something about your God. You treat me like that and I try to kill you. How can I help you? you I understand. You just need a renewing of the mind. So that's what God is saying to us. If we, you know, what we can do is find out why you trying to kill me. And then so everybody, some of you going to have to just go and get rid of. You know how people today, somebody said, well, you know how we investigate how these, how these, uh, how these people raising up, and I, you know, I got my thoughts. What verse am I on? Verse, okay, I see what verse I'm on. I don't have that many more to go, but anyway, I have my own personal thoughts because I'm about tired of going to the grocery store and, and looking behind my shoulder and doing all that stuff. And make, what can I do? So I just, I have this thought in my mind that if you put something in place like God did, so look, if you bother that right there, you shall die. You come in killing up these folk like that, you shall die. You say, well, you know he got a mental problem. I said, all of us got a mental problem. What's the, it ain't no excuse. Stop investigating somebody killing people trying to see how crazy they are. All of us need help. So let's just eliminate the part that he crazy and that's why he did it. I'm, if it was not for this word of God, I still got some crazy areas in my life. I ain't God just taking me kind of slow to kind of get rid of it. So that ain't no excuse. Stop killing these people and saying it because he was crazy. Name one of us that don't need some mental um, counseling. You wasn't crazy when you, when you bought that gun. We got to stop being scared. You, and then once sometimes when you, you set a rule in order, people will say, wait a minute, hold up. At least he's thinking about it. He ain't going to just run in there and do it. Because the day, now that means now, the day that you do it is the day that you say goodbye to this earth. I just let you go in there and sit down. So I'm, what am I saying to my sons and my grandson? Don't try that. Because grandmama don't believe like that. Grandmama believe that you got the right to take somebody out of life. You just ask to exit this earth. That's how I believe. You ain't got nothing else to do but sit up and try to kill somebody. 
Did you think about yourself before you went in the restaurant and all these different places? Do you want to sit up? No, I got to raise kids too. This ain't just this law is for. Even if you say, "Oh, Brenda, she done lost," it. then Brenda is ready to say goodbye. I'm like David. Ain't got time to be saving you. What? What you killing me for? I came in here to get me some. What I want from the grocery store? Some chicken wings. So I go home and fry my own bacon, barbecue, whatever I want to do. And then you come there to shoot me. I ain't got time for you to be doing this stupid stuff. The day you get through, that's me if I was in charge. I'm going to need for you to sit in this chair right here. Keep it charged because you ain't got nothing else to do. And let this be a warning to anybody else that want to try me like that. Anyway. Well, but we live under grace. We don't do that. Yeah, girl, everybody ain't under grace. The word says the law was made for the lawless. That means that the same law that was that people don't accept Jesus, you got to go by the same thing that they got. You kill, you die. But we so we 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 we, we, we but you got to figure how he was thinking. Anyway, you dealing with people, then uh, I just know that I need help, and I ain't killed nobody, and I pay for what's rightfully mine. But I still, that's why I stay in this word. Because I want that mind that was in Christ to also be in me. And I want to find the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God so far has told me I ain't got no being taken over his life. You crazy. You ever oh, let's say it like this. You just as crazy as in the, Well, that's why I say all of us. If we living in sin, we ain't got no sin. How, 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 how sane are you living in sin just because they make a law out of it then you start following behind that law and still say, well, it's okay to do it now because they'll make a law out of it. You just as crazy. It's all they are. All of us need Jesus. The only somebody that's got enough to keep us to love one another so we won't be trying to, at night trying to hurt somebody. That's my story. And I'm going to stick to it. If I read in the word, God said, no, nah, brother, ain't right. Then I come back and tell you, but so far, I think you need somebody with some strict rules that don't play and say, back off. Back off. Stop killing me, folk. Just because you feel like you just want to get up. I'm just saying, I'm telling you, I wouldn't give you, I wouldn't give you 24 hours to still be breathing after you do something like that. I give you enough time to ask you, do you want some meat? If that's what they're gonna give you, what you want? You ain't getting ready to die. People be saying that I just did. I ain't got that. Why? Okay, let me ask you something. Why you got weapons all over you? What you gonna do? Somebody try to hurt you. I'm doing this in behalf. I say this in behalf of people that got the right to live, but it's not nobody. I don't want you to die. I want you to think. I want you to think about not taking somebody's life because what you just did immediately, I vote to have you done the same way. But I thought you were supposed to be treating to tell everybody how to live. I am. Try to get you to live. But you don't understand life. Don't take nobody's life. Just understand you can't keep doing that. I pray that you stop. My whole thing is to get you to live and let them, let them folk alone. Let these people go in and get their nails done. Without them scared of it. We, the people can't think that fast. You, you can't, why, why would you be a coward to walk up on somebody because you felt like, well, my mama did. Mom, boy, all our mamas did that. We ain't got no excuses. All of us got issues. All of us got people that we don't want to talk about in our family. They don't give you the right to kill a young man or young lady. You ain't doing somebody. We need to, you need to sit down and talk to all of us. Got some stories. Let the people live. And then you think about what you're doing. Because as soon as you make that decision to do it, I'm going to call them and say, is the chair ready? We so scared that we can't make a decision and say, stop it. Don't do that. In this, this is the place where you don't do that. This city right here, we don't play that. We're going to catch you and you are not going to be locked up. Why would you still be breathing and you just kill a whole community of people? Well, it ain't. It might not stop it, but I think that it'll make you think. And then the people that you're getting ready to hurt, they can get on to the store to get the bread or the medicine that they need and go on back home. Anyway, that's my, that's my, I, cause ain't no need to be crying out to God saying, Lord, stop. He said, you tell him I said, stop. You tell him I said, stop. 
You tell them, I said, I authorize it. They won't stop. Put something in place that would make them think, don't do that. Increase living by putting some rules in order and then not just play. Don't start no discussion because we've been discussing for 60 years of my life. Ain't time to talk no more. These folks, they, they won't stop. And I, like again, name me somebody. Let me tell y'all how crazy we are as a, as a community. I got to get back into this right here. Verse 7. A few years ago, somebody said Jesus was coming. And told the people what time it was coming. Let me show you how stupid that was. People sold their houses. Did all kind of transaction. That was crazy. I said, now what time you say it coming? Oh, you say it coming at three. My question back then was what time zone? And the news just on the tell me, he said, and they watching this guy like he's he spoken the word from God. What time zone at 3 o'clock is he coming? Because right now it's 3 o'clock here in Mississippi. It's 2 o'clock. Somewhere else it's 3 o'clock. That's how... That, that's what I'm talking about right there. Because I look back and I said, Lord, I don't have a voice, but I do have some sense. Why are these folks acting like that? And the news, carrying that news, and everybody typing. Look how silly we sound. Over something as silly as that man had all them folks to lose all that stuff. Tell them about Jesus coming at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Everybody be ready. And my one question, my silent mind, while I was looking at TV, I said, what time's on? Because when I was looking at, is he, is he talking about Atlanta time? Or he talking about California time? What time? Because you got to get all that right. And why he said, y'all just live and enjoy and treat each other right. Don't worry about what time I'm coming. Because whatever time I'm coming, everybody going to know I'm here. So when you start saying what God said, how simple, you ask me, and I'm going to find something simple to see if I can solve that problem. Because I don't have time to play. I pray that God will raise up leaders that he don't have to send a foreigner in this town to get us under check. Because we don't, God, the earth belongs to the Lord. Your children of Israel were doing just like us. Breaking all the rules, not doing what he said. Then he said, Let me, I'm, I'm going to send somebody over that you can't speak that language. And he said, I'm going to show you, since you don't want me to be God, I'm going to make you submit to somebody. Because at the end of the day, I'm God. And all I'm trying to do is look out for you. But you're so scared to put a rule in place, you don't want to put it, you don't, look at what you do without me. Look at, look at all the stuff the world looks like in the United States. And we are the, and we blessed. At least we had the freedom to kill we got laws that support us and we call us blessed. I'm just saying, nah, and we ain't blessed because we can do that. We just need our minds renewed and get to the simplicity of God. So when people start talking, say, wait a minute, hold on, let me check you out because I need to hear what you're saying. Because what, what you do is you get scared when people start talking and the head, eyes going in the back of their head and then they feel like, because you don't read. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the people that don't read. When you don't read, you will be misled. But then when you do read, stop letting people tell you something that you know not in that book. Well, we ain't going to get the same understanding when you're not reading the same book that God wrote. Because it's too simple. I ain't said not one thing. Nothing but these folks can't jump on David. And David said, no, back off. What are we going to argue over that for? Because you know how we read. We take this book. Oh, I'm just going to go to it. Yeah, you can get something stupid out of there like that. But handle the book the way it was written. Day one, I made that. I said, I, I, God said, I'm going to do this to the earth. Day two, I'm going to do this to the earth. Day three, I'm going to do it. He's giving you the order how to start to read the book. Then he unfolds the story, and then it becomes easy. But if you go in there and start reading way back here, and then go right there, and then turn here, and then go here, and then go here, yeah, you're gonna, you can make the Bible say anything you want to. That's just like calling me, asking me what I think, calling somebody else what they think, what you think, what you think. By the time you get to the... What? That's how we have... The life is God is... He said, I ain't getting y'all nothing hard. I dare you to call my book hard. Read it right. If you're going to handle me, handle me right. Take some discipline. I read one chapter every day. That's how I know what Hadiaza did. Chronicles is just telling you he did it. And the book of Kings tells you more about how he did it. The only thing that I can't do most of the time is pronounce them names, but I do the best I can. 
It's, it's not the names. It's what the names of the people did. I taught Spanish kids. I don't know them kids. I don't know them kids' names to this day. Miss, I said, you did not call my name right. You did not call me. Why you call me name like that? I said, boy, I'm doing the best I can. Are you here? I tell you what. Give me your homework last night. Do you know your name? Then that's good. Now, let's see. Do you know what I'm trying to teach you? I go tell my mommy on you. I'm going to tell her the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I love you, though. I ain't playing. Jim said. All right. Let's get back at the word. Where was that? All right. So David said that even my enemies bringing me a gift. Why? Because I know how to treat my enemy. Just because you did something wrong, I ain't going to mistreat you. I still know how to treat you. David said, if you live. But now you know I will do what I got to do. You come here and act up now. Don't blame me. And the Lord is with me. Y'all wait till I get in the book of Psalms where God tell you take that rod and beat that kid. Oh, you can't do that. Yes, you can. What? what how, how come I can't? I got six sons. I ain't played with them one of them. Now, well, none of them. Because everybody can't understand now. I played with none of them. I have not been into the judge until this day. And they are 28 to about 35. Nobody had to tell me how to raise them boys. I ain't do everything right. I did everything I thought was right. I loved them. I fed them. And I told them when we go to the store, Mama don't buy it, you don't touch it. You ain't got no job. And I remember I went to the store in Sunflower, Sunflower, Mississippi. Sunflower grocery store. And they had the little old candy that you can just grab something, put it in a little plastic bag and weigh it and then you get it. So one of my sons decided, Mom, can I have some of the candy? The answer was no. Two words, two letters, you know. So I'm just going on up the aisle and I look back, he started grinning. Man, that's how caramel in his mouth. Wait a minute, hold up. We got camera in your mouth. Did I just tell you not to bother that? What? I parked that grocery store, that, that park, I, I took that basket to the owner of the grocery store. I said, this boy right here just put a piece of can that I didn't pay for, and I can't, I, however much it cost, I will pay you for it. And I said, leave my grocery in this basket, and I'll be back. I went to somebody, went to the daycare center, I got me a switch and I took those, them little green things, them little plant things that on the stick, because I need the stick. I don't need all that, I don't need all that green stuff. I whooped that boy so, I whooped, I, he, wasn't, he was about maybe three years old. I whooped you for eternity. Do not touch anything that don't belong to anybody else. He ain't touched nothing since. And now he's about 30 some years old. Because I don't play that. Because I know that the same thing, if I don't give you the switch, somebody will kill you, boy. You don't get by me with that. God has given you to be up under my hands. And under my hands, I go to the word. And he told me, he said, you talk to them about me day and night, in and out. When you, I did all that. But when he got to that point, he said, you beat him and deliver his soul from hell. And I know today the only reason why these little old boys down the street doing this is because ain't nobody talk to anything. I ain't talking about beat your kid for everything, but when they need it. And I said, beat. What am I do? Tap, tap. I mean, you not steal. I don't want you stealing a, a crap caramel. I don't want you stealing a pencil. My boys to this day don't even come in the house because they told me, they, they, they said, Mom, we did get over here on you sometimes. You better be glad I ain't know it because I'll get you now. Because I would buy me a some drink, some some juice, and I tell them, so they, I go in there, I said, Wonder, I'm drinking this juice, why my juice ain't never going down? <laughs> what I'm talking about, and then one day I went, I said, drink, because I said, no, something ain't right. I know I had a glass of juice before I went to work. Why it look like it's on the same level I drank? And the next day, it look like the same one. It's stuff all tasty, because it's in there putting water in it. <laughs> They laugh at now. <clears throat> they laugh now. But I caught them dead. I said, try me again. Don't try me like that. They tried, but they God have God was looking out for me. I, I caught them. Do we laugh? Yes, we do. Do we love? Yes, we do. But do mama care about you? Yes, I do. But will mama give you a good 
Speak down. Yes, I will. I want you to live. I ain't hit my kids all the time. I don't owe nobody no explanation when I whooped my kids. I whooped them. And they didn't die. And there ain't no bad guys to this day. I ain't saying they're doing everything right. I, I wish I could get them that. <laughs> time out, mama. We on our own now. Okay. All right. I get your child. No plan. No, I ain't. I get your baby too. Because I love them. God's love does not mean that he, doesn't, he, he, he limits discipline. He wants you to stop. Because I want us to live on the streets of gold where God can trust us and help. I want us to live forever. Part of God, part of living forever is to have something in order. When you get off track, I'll hook you back in there and get back in line. And I ain't trying to, you, you can't tell me I'm telling you, you ain't living that. If I said something good, you ain't living to that either. I mean, not you. I'm talking about the people that ain't listening. People that fighting what I'm saying. I don't even know if you fight what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, that's how I ran my house. And you run your house, your house. But I, do, I know one thing. I bet you, let me tell you something about folks that talk about God's word like that. I work with all kind of people. Child, people ain't telling the truth. People be miserable at home at night. I be sleep. Get what I was doing at night, singing a song. Me and my children, they out there in the yard videoing the same boys that I whooped. I had them tell y'all this, but I had a $600 bill that showed up. And it was hard to say, okay, I ain't got no extra money. I ain't making no extra money right now. But then, then the bill folk was like, we, we ain't put no pressure on you. You can pay it when you get it. How about that bill got paid by one of them kids that I beat down? They grown now. Mama, you need anything? They ain't all the time. Don't get me wrong. They're not all the time. Because I taught them how to do things. But I looked at that bill. I wasn't worried about it. I knew that it had to be paid. Even if I had to pay $100 here and $100 here. Because a lot of stuff happened going on. Because I wouldn't tell you, but tell you what bill it was. That was my water bill. You had a $600 water bill? What happened was I forgot to pay it. But if you came in this house during Corona beginning season... You had, I was washing, you had to take, everybody had to take a bath. It took so many baths until it took the paint off my wall because they wasn't putting the ventilation, ventilation on. And so that bill got behind because it wasn't, I forgot it. And next thing I know, I, you know, I paid it one time, paid about $500 because I, I forget the water bill during this season. I had to start letting them folk take it out of my check. But anyway, I had that bill, they wasn't fussing at me about paying, I paid, I paid on it. And then my son came and said, I pay it. They might, they might fuss, but them boys know I love them. And he's still alive. And I still say, I I'm trying to get them to go back. I said, I taught you everything I know about the word. Go back. I, may, I said, some things I didn't teach right. Or I didn't teach all of it. Go back and check it. And some of them like, Mama, you did your part. Leave us alone. But I'm still praying. You can't even stop me from praying. I wrote all, I wrote all of them a letter this morning. Well, I ain't write it. I just somebody posted them online and I gave it to them. I said, I'm your mom. Don't forget that. They love me too. Anyway, they don't all do what I say do, but I don't be playing with them. So don't. But they grown, whatever. I'm grown too. I told them, I said, every time you get older, I get that much. The ratio is I'm still that many years older than you. I got to follow instructions. You do too. Anyway, get back in the work. <coughs> All right, David said, even the enemies came in and they saw how good David was and they submitted to David. Even while they locked up. They want David to have them locked up like that. David said, this is how I do the folk that don't want to, that want to kill us. You, you be the one that go get the water. You be the one that go make the bricks. You be the one that cut down the wood. And we're going to laugh and talk, but you got to pay this. You, 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 can't, you, mm -mm. You, you can't get back with it now. And they, they honored David. And David took the shields of gold that were on service of Hadiazah. I got Hadiazah. I got, took care of him now. So he had some shields of gold with none of him. He had shields of gold that were on the service of Hadiazah and brought them to Jerusalem. Likewise from Tiphat and from Shun, cities of Hadiazah. See, Hadiazah had a lot of stuff. David said, no, you don't want your stuff. If you want it, why are you come over here messing with me? 
Likewise, from there, Hadiezer brought David very much brass, wherewith Solomon made the brass sea and the pillar and the vessels of brass. So Solomon, David said, I'm going to get the stuff because I tried to tell y'all, you come over here and fight me now. I'm going to beat you down into everything that you got. I'm going to take it. I'm going to make some out of it. He saved it for his son. So when, Sol when Solomon built God a house, he used that stuff that, that he had to take from the enemy because it wasn't under you or no way. Now when Tao, sound like he might have been from the people that from Tao. Now when Tao, king of Hamath, heard how David had smitten our host of Hadiezer, he Boy, I heard you don't beat that. You beat that. He's a, David said, yes, I did. How can I help you? He said, boy, I'm to send you something. He said, is you say? Now, I don't believe in your God, but I sure believe in what your God did through you. I'm in this, my, my boy knocking at your door right now. Open the door for him. What's your name? Oh, uh, my name is Hot Aram. <laughs> I'll call you back, David. David said, okay, bye. Thank you. He sent Hot Aram, his son, well, his son's name is Hot Aram, to King David. So who was that? Now when Tao, Tao heard how he had beat down Hadiezer, Tao said, what? He said, King of Hamath, his name was Tao, <clears throat> or to you. He sent his son, they said, take me down to the day. I'm so, he, he told me Hadiezer is dead. <clears throat> his son said, yes, daddy. He said, what you, what you say, go dad. Take me down to the day. All them wagons and stuff you got out there. Yeah, all that stuff, take it down to the day. God will send you gifts. When they see that you try to do something right in the community, God said, I, I, I back you up. When I hear that you subdued a man that was hurt me, and I'm an enemy too, I'm going to help that man out. I know you don't need nothing, David, but I'm going to be a blessing to you. That man was always picking on me. He sent Hararam, his son, to King David to inquire of his welfare. How you doing, David? And to, con and to congratulate him. My daddy said, you should thank you for getting rid of Hadiezer. Because he had fought against Hadiezer and smitten him, killed him. But Hadiezer had war with Tao. Every time Tao looked up, Hadiezer, Hadiezer was just a guy that felt like I could just blow up a building if I wanted to send an airplane and I knew. And David said, no, not today. You ain't finna fly no airplane into no building, kill all them folk, and then live to tell about it. And he said, I'm so glad you got that boy. And with him, all manner of vessels of gold and silver and brass. That man had loads and loads and loads and loads. He said, David, I don't care what you got. I just want to send you some. And then David said, I'm going to take it to Jerusalem. Then also King David dedicated. He said, I took that stuff and dedicated it to the Lord. What do you mean dedicated to the Lord? How do you dedicate something to God? God said, now I made all this stuff. How are you going to dedicate it to me? He said, bring it to the place where I'm going to give it back to you. Distribute what you bring it. Make it good for the people. Not to uh, uh, consume it to yourself and make yourself look like you there. And, and Like you look all good here, but your body got a missing breast. And, and the people in the church is, is all weak and skinny and you looking all fat in the face. He said, I don't look like that. He said, when I look good, the body looks good. David said, I don't need all this. What am I do with all this stuff? What am I do with all that gold and all that money that you got? I'm going to give it to God. said, bring it to me, and I'm going to tell you what to do with it. David said, Lord, tell me what to do with it. That's how we dedicate things to God. And then that's how God gives it back to us. He said, rightfully, go take care of the widows. Go, get, go take care of the homeless. Go, go, I mean, no, he didn't say that. He didn't say homeless. Take that back, because I don't play that. He said, take care of the widows and take care of the orphans. Those that men supposed to be in the lives of these people. Homeless, that's a different kind of category. That's something that we made up for people who don't want to go to work. And we do all kind of stuff for them. God said, I said, take care of them widows, them women that had support, and they were left with children, and those kids without a father. He specified that. But then we make people lazy because we want to give them something because you ain't doing nothing. You're not getting nothing from me. It's too much trash on the ground for you to say, I ain't got nothing to do. That's a lie. That's a lie that we do. That we, we made God's world look like a mockery. People walk around begging and you feeling sorry. I don't feel sorry for nobody walking out there begging. I got one knee and I, I got one good knee and another one that needs some support. And you out there begging me and you can stand up longer than me. Wait, hold on. Somebody's at my front door. I need to find out who it is.
Excuse me, y'all. I'm too far in the back. No, I'm gonna keep going. I'm trying to see who. Anyway, my camera got everything. I'll give them a see. All right. They gave David silver and gold, and he brought them from the, these nations from Edom and from Moab and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines and from the Amalek. All right, well, I lost my thought. Then also David dedicated unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he brought from all these nations, from Edom and from Moab and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines. All these folk that were poking on me said, I got the silver and gold from you. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zariah, slew of the Edomites, Edomites in the Valley of Salt, 18,000. That was the other guy that was helping David out. They were doing all that by himself. But he was doing the name of David. This is what Jesus said. When you go out and do what I said, do, it ain't going to be about you. You do it in my name. This guy had the authorization to do this in David's. David's David got the credit. But somebody else did the work. But when the war was over, it was all given in the credit of David because he was the one in charge. What did Jesus say to us? Whatever you do, make sure you do it in my name. Don't ever try to give yourself titles and, and awards. If you're going to do it and I told you to do it, then let me get the credit. Because you work for me. This, this guy worked. This guy didn't have nothing to worry about. If anybody was going to get killed at the end of the day, it was going to be David. Because they said, we get you. We got, we, we'll subdue your whole country. But he said, don't give me no credit. Give it back to the one that gave me the power to do what I just did. That's what Abishai did. That was David's nephew. And he put garrisons in Edom. And all garrison means a military fort. Like Fort Garrison, Fort something, Fort David. He put garrisons in Edom. And all the Edomites became David's servants. Edomites. There was some, there was some other folk, Edomites. I got to think of who they were. They might have been, is it Edom that was uh, 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 Esau's kinfolk? I think they were, but I might be wrong on that. But anyway, they, all these people related to David, but they just won't act right. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. He said, you get my word, you do what I say, they, wherever you go, I'll preserve you. So David reigned over Israel, all Israel, and executed judgment and justice. What is judgment and justice? That means I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it after I tell you what you did. If you follow my instruction, I'm going to judge you right and I'm going to treat you right. The justice, the judgment is you know what to do, and the justice is what I'm going to give you if you don't do it, or if you do, either way. Among all people, he was, this is the, talking about having a president of the United States, and he's being used by God to govern people and he trusts God to get it done and he said I'm going to do, I'm going to do you justice and I'm going to do the right judgment. My judgment would be fair. I won't, I won't tax you any more than you're supposed to be taxed. Yes, you will be taxed because we got to pay for these street lights and all this stuff. Ain't nobody paying personally. And Joab, the son of Zariah was over the whole. So David said, let me show you how organized we are. So Joab is my nephew. It's a lot about Joab. He was no good, but he will do what he had to do without kindness. In other words, Joab was a guy that believed in killing and asking a question. Even if you did it 15 years ago, he still, still said, I want to kill you today. David said, you ain't got no right to do that. You don't kill people just because you think they ought to die. But Joab was that kind of guy, but that's more history that you have to learn about him. And Joab, the son of Zariah, was over the host. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahalu, was the recorder. David said, if you're going to say you're doing something in God's name, be organized. Don't let no one person run the show. Don't let the pastor and your teacher and the principal run the show. You're supposed to, be, you're supposed to know what's going on. And Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Abimelech, the son of Abathar, were the priests. You've got to have somebody that's going to stay in line with the word to help things out. And Shabbat was a scribe. Somebody write down everything. We ain't just doing this off the top of our head. David said, how many dead? They said 265. 265. How many we got left alive? Uh, uh, the number that got left alive. Anyway, he was a scribe. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoadai, was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And the son of David were chief. David said, I even got my sons out here working. 
And the sons of David were chief about the king. So he said, my house is in order. I get my instruction from God. I tell you, you're going to die if you mess with me. And if you don't mess with if you, this is how to, to summarize this whole thing. Everything is in order. I ain't going to kill you unless you want to be killed. Well, unless you want to die. I know there ain't no tea on them. So anyway. uh, and so they kept messing with David. And David said, I'm telling you now, back off. What is God telling us? Establish some order about yourself. Establish some order in your community. If you don't want to clean up the yard and clean, you know, keep the, our neighborhood looking, get, looking right, we're going to actually leave the neighborhood and mean it. You want to go to the grocery store, we're going to actually leave your weapons out, out, outside and mean it. We got to get things under control. And then David said, if you want to die, it's only because you want to. I do not want you to die. But I will have to take you out of here if, I, if you came in and hurt somebody. And he meant it, and he did it. And the Lord was with him. And he took away the stuff they had no right. Well, you ain't got no better sense than to give up everything you got. And we're not going to leave it laying there. You did. I'm going to take it. I'm going to give it back to God. And then God's going to tell me what to do with it. And everybody's going to be on one accord. And then I'm going to have my secretary. And I'm going to have my chief of staff. I'm going to have everybody watching what I'm doing, taking notes so that we can tell Elsa to put this in the book of 1 Chron Chronicles, chapter 18. Love y'all. Bye.